What's up, magical people? Welcome back to Your Most Magical Life. I'm Mia Magic, and today we are talking about how to actualize, find, create, live in your purpose. This is a question that I get all the time in so many different forms, and I just as someone who is so blessed to be living so wholeheartedly in my purpose, I wanna share the little pieces and tidbits and the parts of my path and my journey that have been most impactful in actualizing again and being able to live an embodiment of my purpose. So if this is something that you are really seeking support with, I have to just share with you that my new program Sorceress is available and open. We begin on March 26th. It's a perfect springtime experience. It's a 12 week embodiment journey really to harness the power of the elements and universal forces of creation. So if you watch my last video, it's really all about how we can use the elements to manifest, heal, and overcome any block in our lives that are preventing us from experiencing pleasure, actualizing our purpose, living in alignment with who we truly are, and being able to call in and attract absolutely anything we desire, whether that's partnership or to enhance a partnership we're already in, to have the kind of dream career, again, purpose, money, whatever it is. So we are embarking upon that journey again on March 26th to really Ah, just align with all this gorgeous springtime energy of renewal and rebirth. So would love to see you there. Make sure you click the link below if you're interested in joining me. So finding your purpose. Now, there are a lot of different systems that people use to help support all of us in understanding even what our purpose is. Now, for me, I'm really lucky that my purpose is something that I was able to turn into a business. You know, there's a lot of people where they're Purpose is something that's intangible. It's being able to offer support or love or care for other people. And of course you can in some ways turn those things into a career. Um, you know, there's people who care for the elderly, who care for children, who care for each and every one of us, right? As coaches, obviously I'm a coach. I have my own coaches and therapists and all of the people and I really need them. So the most important thing is to figure out what you enjoy doing. What do you like? What would you do for free? So many of you who have been here, which is not that many of you, because back in the day I had like 2,000 YouTube subscribers, but those of you who have been here all this time, I'm like, definitely let me know in the comments because I want to know who you are. But back in the day, I used to make YouTube videos for literally basically no one and nothing. I didn't have a big enough account for monetization. Um, even like the, if there's even ads on this, like I don't even run my own YouTube in that way anymore. So I don't know if there's ads on these videos, honestly, but even that, the money that comes from YouTube is so insignificant. It's like a few hundred dollars. It doesn't like scratch the surface on the overhead of my life. I made these videos because I wanted to connect with you because I wanted to offer my wisdom because I wanted to share what I was learning and how I was growing and what was transforming in my life and how I was experiencing a purposeful existence even before I had a specific purpose that is now my career and my job and my work and my business. So what does it mean to live a purposeful life for you? What does it mean to experience purposefulness in your existence. Now, again, a lot of this is intangible. So for me, I wanted to live a magical life, obviously. I wanted to be able to connect with people through the lens of magic, through the lens of nature. I still, I only have like the kinds of connections with nature, with people really like on my retreats. Everyone who likes to come to my retreats uh, loves nature and that's a big, important thing. You have to love nature if you want to come on one of my retreats because you're going to get pushed into outside of your edges of your comfort zone if you don't like nature. And like, who doesn't like nature really? We just have fear and it's like part of the things to overcome and, you know, heal the blocks of which we're going to dive into in this conversation about purpose. But I don't have a lot of friends that love nature and spending time outside and can hike barefoot the way that I can. That's okay. It's still part of my purpose to be able to connect people to the natural world, to have my own deep, profound connection to nature and to the elements and to the experience of my environment as a reflection of me in some way. So 
Some people are really into nature. Some people are really into friendship and to being there for people and who are really just so committed to, like that's one of my mom's greatest superpowers is being a good friend. She will literally drive anyone anywhere, surgeries, meal prep for like, she just does not stop. She is such an endless source of support as a friend. That's one of her greatest powers. Now, if you are one of those people who's consistently giving to others and maybe that giving is over giving and it actually makes you feel, you know, a little burnt out or it's not totally aligned all the way. And maybe it's coming from a childhood wound where you worry that if you don't give enough, you're not going to be accepted or you're not going to feel safe or held or like you belong or you'll be rejected, then you'd want to work on that. Of course, like this is the biggest thing we're going to dive into in a moment around how to find what your purpose is and remove the blocks, get rid of like free yourself from anything that's in the way of feeling worthy of exchanging value for this thing that you enjoy, right? So being of service to people, right? There's like task rabbits and Uber drivers and, you know, so many people who like deliver food. Like there's so many ways you can be of service to people and get paid for it. Obviously, myself included, you know, I have worked as a coach for over a decade and I now at the beginning, I was certainly not paid handsomely for it, but now I definitely am. It's a process. And so it starts with what you love to do, what you are interested in, what you would do for free, what you would do just for the sheer joy of it. That was what happened for me. I would be in nature. I would hang out in castles. I would make videos. I would talk about spiritual stuff and consciousness and do rituals for free anytime, no matter what, because that's what I love. That's what I'm interested in. That's what helped me transform my life. That's what made me who I am. That's what brought me to my purpose. And now my purpose, of course, is awakening magic in all of humanity, ideally, and reconnecting us to our true nature through nature. But can you see how that's literally just a manifestation of what I love and what I'm interested in and what I would do for free anyways? So that's the number one thing. It's like, what would you do for free? What would you do no matter what? What do you love doing? What lights you up? What makes you feel good? And then what is the way that you might be able to share, monetize, bring that into if you want, right? Like if you want your purpose to be your career, remember you can have a purpose that isn't the thing that makes you money. It's like, this is what I'm here to do on the planet. You know, there's like activists and, and artists, you know, there's people who make art that, that don't make money off of it. Again, I said this in my last video, you can definitely make money from art for sure. I've seen a lot of people doing it and crushing it, but it doesn't have to be that your purpose is the same as your career. So your purpose is what you are meant to do, achieve, accomplish, or create in this lifetime on this planet right now. Full stop. Like I said, for my mom, like part of her purpose is being a good friend, is being an incredible support system to the people in her life that she loves. That is a profound purpose. Does she feel like that's her ultimate purpose in this lifetime? No, but I don't know if she cared about finding what that was or what that is. So you can have purposeful and meaningful experiences and actions that you do in your life that allow you to experience, again, a purposeful existence to feel fulfilled that aren't your job. Or you can work on how do I make this into a career? Now, the important part about that, this is what I've been alluding to throughout is it very often you're going to have some form of limiting belief, negative program, block, stagnant energy, something that feels like it's holding you back. Something that feels like, oh my God, I really want to do this thing. I really want to share this message. I really want to actualize my purpose in this way, but I can't, I am, I'm not, it's not, it won't, right? We start a lot of sentences with terms and words like that. I can't speak publicly. Uh, I can't paint or I can't draw or I can't drive or I can't afford to do the training that would allow me to then be the thing that I want to be. Uh, I'm too much. I'm not enough. I don't deserve it. I'm unworthy. It won't work. I will fail right? These are all the little excuses that we come up with in our minds. And 
not to toot my own horn, but that is the work that I have been doing with myself, my students and my clients. And that we focus on in Sorceress is eradicating the root and the origin and the source of those limiting beliefs and negative patterns, those old programs that come from religion or from our parents or from our teachers or from our peers, whatever it is. And the most important part of finding your purpose and living a purposeful life is eradicating what's in the way. That is it. So yeah, know what you like, know what you want, know what you want to accomplish in your life. Know what you feel like you are meant to do that if you're on your deathbed and you have not done this thing, you're going to regret it. That's your purpose. That's it. That can be a myriad of things. It can be self-involved, right? Like some people it's like, oh, my purpose is to skydive. I'm like, cool, bless, you know, great. Does that help the world? Maybe. I'd say like, Probably not that much, but if that thrill is what makes you feel alive, we are all meant to feel alive. We're not meant to feel dead inside and isolated and alone and heartbroken and, I mean, like heartbroken for moments for sure, but like so mentally ill and trapped in these old versions of ourselves. That's not what life is for. So when you look at, okay, what do I like? What am I interested in? What do I feel like I'm meant to do? What will I regret if I die without doing it? And then... What is the thing that I could do or how could I turn those aspects into something that is exchanged value for? Like I'm just exchanging value. It's not about like making money, right? Someone, I just did an interview for a college paper, like a PhD paper that someone was doing. And she asked about money as an energy and about capitalism. And she was like, you know, how do you feel about capitalism? I was like, well, I'm a capitalist, so I feel great about it, but I'm not an extractive capitalist. A priestess like me would have been fully taken care of in her tribal community. And that's just not the way that the world works anymore. So like, I got to make money in order to survive. I feel great about exchanging the value of my wisdom, my techniques, my tools, my methods, my pain, (laughs) you know, everything that I've used to actualize purpose in my life. I love being able to exchange that for the value that allows me to continue to do so, right? It's just like a beautiful cyclical energy. And so what I really invite you to do is to look at what all those statements are that are in the way. Where do I not believe in myself? Where do I feel unworthy? Where do I feel like it won't work anyways? Where do I feel like, you know, oh, I don't know enough or I don't have the experience or I don't have the skills, whatever it is. And that's where your work to actualizing your purpose begins. That is what I have been doing for the last 10 plus years. That is the work that is the most valuable. And that's why it's what I'm sharing in Sorceress. That's why I want to offer it to you. That's why I give my coaching, you know, that I'm, get paid over $4,000 an hour for now to everyone in the program because it is so valuable to have that kind of support. So take a moment right now while you're here on this video, maybe you didn't even expect this, but I want you to just close your eyes and feel into your body. And when you think about purpose and what you're here to achieve and accomplish in this lifetime on earth, here and now, When you think about purpose, let it just be a shining light before you You don't have to know what it looks like, but where in your body do you feel the limitation? Where do you feel the hold back or the fear? Where do you feel the part of you that says, no, I can't, or it's not going to happen, or "I, I don't deserve it, or I won't be able to reach it. Where do you feel that part of yourself in your body? And how can you then connect with that part? and see and feel and experience if there is a part of you that has some kind of memory or some kind of story or some kind of old pattern that is stuck, that is stuck in that pain. And just notice what it looks like, what it feels like, what memories arise. And can you ask that part of yourself, what do you need? What do you need from me? And just listen to what it needs. Maybe it shows you a picture. Maybe it's a feeling. And then how can I give this to you? How can I give this to you? How can I provide this for you? How can I offer you this thing that you need? How specifically do you need to experience it? And 
And now envision yourself giving yourself that thing. Whether it's playing or dressing up or a hug or love or affirmation or being told that you are enough, whatever it is, give that to that piece of you. Let yourself experience it. And then notice the difference between how that radiant light of your purpose beams upon you, shines its light. Does it feel closer? Does it feel more possible? Just noticing and then returning to this space. That practice, that's obviously a tiny microdose of it, but that practice will help you achieve your purpose. What's standing in the way? How can I give the wounded child the fear, the limitation? How can I give it what it needs? Because it's just trying to get what it needs. It's standing in my way, but it's trying to get what it needs. So can I give it what it needs in order for it to get out of the way? Can I give it everything that it needs? Can I be the loving parent? Can I be the unconditional support and acceptance that this part of me needs, even though it's afraid? in order to then help it to move through, to overcome its own obstacle and be able to be exactly, <laughs> and be able to be exactly what I need in order to experience more safety in my purpose. This is an incredible practice. This will support you no matter where you are. And this is just literally like a one iota of the work that we do in Sorceress in order to eradicate what is in the way. So the most important thing is being able to tune in, being able to listen, listen to your body, listen to your intuition, listen to your spirit, because it's going to guide you. It's going to give you so many insights, so much information, so many opportunities to find your purpose, but you have to listen. You have to say yes. You have to follow through. You have to do what it asks of you. If it's going to invite you to do something or be something, you have to RSVP. If it's going to call upon you and ask something great of you, you have to answer that call. That is the most important part of finding and actualizing your purpose. What's your purpose, my little tiny kitty girl? Oh, you're so cute. Her purpose is helping me <laughs> heal and love. You're so funny. You're just right in front of the camera, you little dumpling girl. Yeah, baby. <laughs> so if you can work through the blocks, the limitations, if you can be so brave, so courageous as to face off with the parts of you that say it'll never work, you're not worth it, you're too much, you're not enough, you're this, you're that, whatever the stories are, because everyone's are going to be different because they all come from different wounding, different experiences, different trauma that we've had in our lives. But if you can face off with those aspects of yourself, if you can say, I'm willing to listen to you. I'm willing to give you what you need. I'm willing to offer you my support. I'm willing to show up for you. I'm willing to share my heart and my love with you. That's what everyone needs. That's what all of us need in our wounding. That's what all of us, all of our little inner children, all of our little inner kittens, Whatever it is, we all just need to feel loved, safe, held, heard, supported, and seen. So if you can give that to the parts of you that don't feel safe, heard, held, supported, seen, that's why they have to act out. That's why they're always trying to do something to get your attention. That's why they're sabotaging. That's why they're making you feel small is because they feel small. It's just a wound. It's just one little moment in your life, one little story, one little experience that colored an entire aspect of your psyche that informs a whole part of your behavior. If you can give nourishment and love to that, those parts of yourself that keep you from your purpose, that is how you will find it. That is how you will actualize it. That is how you will experience it. And that is everything that we're doing in Sorceress. That is the most important thing 
It's like, yes, they're all manifestation rituals, but they're manifestation rituals through the lens of healing and releasing, moving through what's in the way, and then being able to fill that space that we've liberated with more magic, with more safety, with more beauty, with more acceptance, and with more purpose. So I would so love to have you. It'd be such an honor to share this incredible gift with you. Please, if you feel called to join me in Sorceress in this incredible ritual embodiment experience, let me know. Click the link below. We have such a powerful coven forming and there have been so many wins. So many people have found their purpose through doing this work, through engaging in these rituals and releasing that which was standing in their way. So I'm so excited to have you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I am Mia Magic, and as always, it is my greatest pleasure to welcome you to your most magical life.